So, I thought I'll give you some background information. I think I did it once uh, when I was uh, explaining all kinds of uh, loudspeaker thingies. But since this stack thing is a little bit more complicated to just show and tell you what's going on, probably half of you or more, maybe all, did understand. I don't know, but let's make a fast drawing of what is actually going on and, um, and, and what's the reason why, why I would want to do that. So, um, this is my uh, drawing tool. I'm first gonna draw a simple electrostatic speaker seen from the top. Uh, and uh, what the and I'll let you see what the membrane is actually doing. So if we make a stator, let's make it big actually. So this is gonna be a stator. So these are the stators. This is a top side view of a panel. I'll uh, show you. Top view. This is one of the tiny panels, but these are connected, the both stators are connected to a, an audio transformer that increases the voltage of your amplifier to, I don't know, depending on what, what kind of transformer, but let's say a few thousand volt. But it remains, of course, um, AC, because that's what sound is, actually. It is AC, of course. If 50 hertz, if you would connect like your <laughs> wall socket in Europe to a speaker, then you would hear a very loud 50 hertz sound. So, it changes. It changes from positive to negative, uh, etc. So, if you look at a sine wave, for instance, this is positive, if I draw a line here, and this is minus. So, the voltage on here, it, it well, it depends on the signal, but in this case, if we look at the sine wave, it, it changes. But, just for fuck's sake, we're going to take one point. And at this moment in time, this one is positively charged, or has a positive voltage on it, it's not actually charged. And this one is negative. So we're looking at a, like a, we passed the sine wave, sort of. Now, the membrane is a foil that conducts slightly. And it's a bit like a balloon, for instance, you can charge, or any other objects, you can charge it with a high voltage. For instance, you will uh, remember if you have a uh, a sweater that's uh, wool, you get all these sparks because it is charged. And I'll show you as well uh, how it works with uh, charged, charged objects. Now, to show you what this stat static uh, force is, or I'm not sure what it is called, it has probably a very nice... Adam, I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll show you with uh, a a trick that probably everyone has seen, if not, then it's still funny because I've only seen it like a year ago <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, yeah, why not? So, this is uh, gonna be, I'm gonna let it, no, it's not dripping, it's like a very tiny stream of water. I have to get it just right. Oh, that's too much. As small as possible. I'll zoom in a bit. So there's your water. Now, as we know, if you comb your hair, uh, it becomes statically charged, especially my hair, because it's so thin, it, it will, well, it explodes, sort of. Uh, the hair explodes, but also this comb is going to be charged. And I'm not sure if it's positive or negative, it doesn't really matter. I think it was positive, I'm not sure. Um, but this water has a charge as well, and you can show it with, well, with this comp. I'll just run it through my hair a few times, because <laughs> it does charge my comp very well. So, yeah, 
it's already crackling and such so this is probably a lot of voltage on this comp right now doesn't see it doesn't feel it, feel it but let me I can show you here you go I can deflect this water quite a lot actually look how fucking it loses charge quite quickly because I hold it but it's almost uh, touching it Ooh. so yeah and that's exactly what's happening with this uh, membrane there's a pretty high voltage not nearly as high on this uh, well let's do it the other way around there is a very high voltage on the foil just compared with the comp and there is also rather high voltage but if you talk static statics uh, it's not that much but uh, also a voltage on the stator so eh, they're gonna attract or push each other away just like this water does with this comp and that's how ESL works and this was actually a single ended electrostatic speaker what you it does exactly that what a single ended does if it was positive there was another stator on this side doing the exact opposite pushing the water away instead of attracting it so that's a very cool I think it's really nice it's amazing how much this water deflects with just a fucking comb so yeah you use the same method as I've showed you with the water and the comp is happening in this speaker this foil is charged to high voltage either positive or negative it doesn't really matter one of the two but just for fuck's sake we'll say it is negatively charged uh, and yeah so what's happening if you look at this drawing and it doesn't even fit on here so that's not good if you look at this drawing, in this moment of time, this foil uh, would do the following. It is negatively charged, so it would like to be with the opposite charge. In this case, the front stator is uh, positive, so it will deflect towards this stator. And as well, it doesn't want to be with the negatively charged because it's the same, they're both negative. So this stator will push it in, in this direction and the first front stator will pull it in the same direction. That's why they call it push-pull. So you got two forces on, on the back side of the foil and on the front. One is pulling, one is pushing, push-pull. So that's a normal ESL. Then I thought, well, you can as well uh, like in, in loudspeaker uh, normal driver uh, land <laughs> put it in isobaric or in this case that would just mean putting speakers behind each other and in this case I expect it to have a little bit more output I hope for at least so what you get is the same um, maybe I can draw it here but I'm not with the I have to draw it smaller so you got a stator and another stator. That will be just like isobaric putting two speakers behind each other. We got two foils, four stators, twice as much as the original ESL. Now the only problem is that if this front one was positive at a given time in the, in this sinusoidal wave or whatever sound, this was negative, uh, this was positive, and this was negative, then the bias on these foils we both said were negative, negatively charged, statically charged, hence the name, electrostatic speaker. Um, so this this well this should work. The only thing is that the membrane is pretty much fur, further apart 
which is not cool. You want to have the space as small as possible. But the biggest problem actually is there are two stators here that should be both as close together as possible, but they're out of phase or, you know, this one is negatively charged and the other one is positively charged. Well, to, it's uh, like ideal to create arcs, uh, ozone and, uh, and whatnot. So this is not very, it's not gonna work. This is just rubbish. So, I ran out of paper. Is this one good? This is better, I think. The stacked one works like this. Gonna draw again. Stay there. This time a freehand almost. Stay there. A foil. Stay there. A foil. And another stator. This was plus, this is minus, this is gonna be plus. Now you would think if these were still, sorry, if the foils were both still negatively charged, they will move. This one will move towards the positively charged stator. This one will move also to the positive charged stator or with the positive voltage on it. Uh, and what will happen is that both foils will move in the opposite direction. Net result will be no sound if it was ideal, which is it's not, so you probably would hear something, but so that's not cool. But what you can do is use two bias voltages. This is minus. Let's make this foil statically charged, but in this case positively statically charged. Instead of this one uh, being negative. Now this foil doesn't want to be on this positively voltage stator, so it's gonna move the other way around. And then you have two foils in tandem playing as an isobaric system, kind of. So that's, in short, the stacked version. If you would have more stacks, you would repeat this, of course, and then the membranes just flip in bias. Next membrane will be negatively charged, following membrane, again, positively charged. And, uh, yeah, this will save you on one stator, not the problems you had in the other idea with the positive and negatively charged stators so close together this is this is actually what it is in short and this will add plus 6 db so that's nicely written and it's also very nice i mean 6 db is as much as you could get if you would double the step up ratio of your transformer so, by only adding one stator and a foil, rather cheap, uh, there are a few limitations. You can only do this, uh, this distance from foil to foil, uh, can only be maximum half a wavelength. Otherwise, the foil in the back, if, if you had more foils, will be out of phase with the first foil at this wavelength. And then that will result in a dip or no sound at that frequency. So you have to stay, for instance, at 20 kilohertz. It's a full wavelength is 1.7 centimeters, I believe. So at uh, eight and a half millimeters, that's the maximum you uh, you may have these foils apart before it hurts the 20 kilohertz. I must add, it does that a little bit earlier, but that's due to weight. Because what I noticed is the foil's weight does add up. So that's too bad, but that's just the way it is. But still, uh, it is quite easy to find thinner foil for small, very small panels. I used one micron, for instance, that's still three times as less as the quad, and usually six times as less as most ASL speakers. So
yeah. Uh, well, that's it.